This episode of Twin Cities Trekkies is brought to you by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor before, let me explain. First of all, it's free. There are creation tools that help you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership required. They'll also help you to distribute your podcast so it can be heard on many different platforms such as Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's all you need in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. everyone welcome to episode 37 of twin cities trekkies i am wes and i'm kenzie and today we're going to talk about the star trek cookbook written yes. by ethan phillips and william j Behrens. so yeah. i really love <laughs> on the cover of this that it's like styled in the in the form of like old 50s cookbooks like the the like the plating and like the display it looks just like that it's so funny Yes. So, yeah, this book is now 23 years old, by the way, folks. Uh, this was published in 1999 during the height of Star Trek, originally uh, during the 90s when Star Trek was insanely popular. So, and for I've those seen who haven't people... seen, for those who haven't seen it, it has Neelix on the front of it, of course, you know, yeah. a very yeah. important chef in the Star Trek series. <laughs> Yeah, totally. So we're going to go through the book and, you know, talk about, like, go through it and see what looks appetizing to us and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm going to mention this to you right now. We, uh, My wife, Holly, has suggested that, you know, you come to my place or I go to yours and we can cook something out of this thing and do a video cast for this podcast for like doing one of the uh, one of the recipes out of here. So. Yeah. So that may be maybe down the road. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, be cool. <laughs> something to do, you know, with regarding this, you know. And I know that a lot of people have been purchasing this book lately. I know that uh, with the pandemic and people are staying at home, they're going like, okay, what can I make out of something that I've never done before? So a lot of people have tried to hone their cooking skills regarding uh, during this COVID pandemic. So, I mean, I have too. I've done a lot of different recipes yep. lately. Thanks so, I like to cook and I love trying out new new meals. So, yeah. this is exciting. I have not actually made anything out of here yet, but I was trying to take a look at some of the drinks because I feel like that was an easy way to start. But I would yeah. like to get a little more into this and know what sounds good, I guess, and what I would absolutely not make. So, which isn't very much stuff. I, I, I like eating most food, so. Yeah, I'm an adventurous eater myself, so this is going to be fun to talk about. So to get in touch with us, it is simple. Send us an email at tctrekkiespodcast at gmail.com. Feel free to send us an email with anything you'd like to say. Granted, if you have this book, you can let us know if you've d- tried anything out of here. And and stuff like that. Same thing if you see our posts about this on Facebook and Instagram. Handle us TC Trek East Pod. And, you know, if you have any suggestions on this book, we can definitely, you know, consider it if we ever do this suggestion of a video cast for uh for this for the doing this and we can, you know, share how we are making it and stuff like that. This would be fun. And stuff like that. But keep in mind that any feedback you do leave, vocal or written, may be featured in a future episode of Twin Cities Trekkies.
Okay, so <laughs> this book was made in 1999, so it's through middle of season five of Voyager. So uh, through the end of season five of Voyager. So it doesn't have anything from Enterprise in here. doesn't have anything from their other shows because this is 23 years old. So, yeah, I mean, they should come up with a second edition and include the other casts now, like Enterprise and Discovery and Picard and Lower Decks and stuff like that. So, because there's certain de- been different foods on their shows. Yep. You know, so uh, I've definitely been eating like Kelpian uh, was eaten in Discovery. Gormagander was eaten in Discovery. Uh, there was. What was that one thing uh, in Lower Decks? Oh, shoot. I have the name of it now. But it was something that it was that uh, they were shooting a whole bunch of it at Tendi when she turned into this scorpion thing. Oh, so, yes. What? Yeah. Was it cake? It was some sort of cake, wasn't it? it yeah, it was some yeah. kind of cake. I don't, I don't remember what it was exactly, but that's, oh, that's been also been. Yeah. So, yeah. This is interesting because it actually also. Um, you know what's funny is, it's they also have uh, it's it got uh, Star Trek related foods, but it also includes the cast members' favorite dishes. So I mean, it has uh, stuff like um, yeah, so the Enterprise and stuff like that. And it has yeah, all the the nice thing about I like how this is split out is split out by series or by ship. You know, so it's like the crews yeah. from each each ship and then deep space nine has a lot because they have like the bar and everything. So you can see that they have some pretty cool stuff around like drinks and then they just do a little bit around like life on Voyager. (laughs) Yeah. And like some of these aren't just like some are recipes and some are like explaining the food. Like if it's like, you know, like a food that doesn't exist in, real life like it's like more like oh this is what that actually is supposed to be and gives a little like lore around what it is but yeah i think a lot of especially like a lot of the like i i really wanted to make plumeek soup because i love like any soup that has like like uh squash like things in it so that one sounded good to me because of zucchini and spinach and all of that like and any sort of like squash yeah. But oh, I like, like this. I, any sort of soups, <laughs> I'm like, I'm down with stews. Yeah. Soup. Yeah, and it's you know it's it's got over 300 pages, so there's a bunch of bunch of other things to look at and stuff like uh, whatever you've seen your fancy you want to try, go for it. But uh, <laughs> but this and is. I love the the intros of like. Uh, I like the intros of each recipe, like explaining, like from a thing, be like, "Oh, I was just fooling around, like with a re- like a replicator, and decided I'd try to make this," and explaining like how you would actually make it. So, yeah, and it's like it's 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 good that you know it's all like that, and <laughs> I like the forward here. Um, yeah, from uh, yeah, I like the forward at the beginning. It says. And it was by Cork, as told by Armin, to Armin Shimmerman. It isn't often I give anything away for free, unless, of course, there is greater profit to be made later on. But I'm feeling unusually generous. Ethan Phillips, the actor, now that's an unprofitable profession, yeah. who plays that, that delightful character Mr. Neelix on Star Trek Voyager had the temerity to ask me to write, write a few words for a Star Trek cookbook. At first, I just laughed. Not only was it an absurd suggestion of charity, but also at the unbelievable garnish of makeup he was wearing. There are things I won't even do for a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, then, but then I thought, why not? After all, we serve some of that same food. Granted, it's replicated at Corpse Bar, Grill, Gaming House, and Hollow Street Arcade. See the recipe Pule for Rang. I thought, why not get some free publicity for my place in exchange for a few brief minutes at the word processor? So, with any further ado, buy the book, cook the food, tell your friends you'll be happy. You'll you'll be you'll love it. There, Ethan. Yeah. I hope you're happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I love that, and I and I love it. It's all written in the perspective of Neelix, so it just yeah, it's super nice. Yeah. Like, it tells a little bit about each character, like 
saying who it is, like media, like who it, Harry Kim is, and the things he you know he thinks about when he thinks about him, and like I don't know, it's a but also they refer to them in both like the actor as well as like the character so oh yeah you know, like the doctor has a recipe that's Robert ricardo's penne penne like and uh, and so i think that's kind of fun to be like oh you can like we're going to actually reference the actor instead of <laughs> instead of the character yeah yeah it was always it's it, yeah i like the fact that that they um like some of the things that were written for the character or stuff like that you know uh william Burns actually went to the set of Voyager and actually um and the other shows to like get their the, the um actors um favorite dishes and stuff like that cuz um uh, and stuff like that and talked about the, the way the food was actually made on the show and yeah. I think that was kind of interesting to see that um yeah, regarding you'll see, that. you'll see like Janeway has like a Kate Mulgrew's pork tenderloin but then there's also like things around Janeway or 7 of 9 is Jerry Ryan's wild mushroom soup like and so I, I think that's really neat because that's a perfect way. Like I, that's why I always love, like, especially local cookbooks. Man, my favorite thing about growing up in a small community is getting like church cookbooks, and you'd like find out all your friends' families' like favorite recipes. It's such a great way to like find out what people like or their comfort foods and what they want to share with people. And I feel like that's like some of these where it's like asking actors, like, "Well, what type of food do you like, or what's a type of recipe you'd want shared with people?" And being like, well, I got this recipe, and you should add that to your cookbook. Yeah, and they also mentioned the uh, um, uh, <laughs> one of the most uh, iconic things in the Next Generation is the cellular peptide cake with mint frosting. Yeah, and there's actually a recipe for that in this book. I definitely so, want to make that for my birthday this year. I would 100% be down to try to make that. <laughs> Yeah. Like Holy I only crap. want a peptide cake. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they talk about actually how they actually achieved it on the set yep. of the next on the intent forward, actually. After the after the recipe, they talk about how they were able to get Marina Service's head on that cake. Yeah. In in that episode of Next my Generation. Dad and I joke being like, well, that'd be like like we're laughing about that because we're funny. And it's like, well, now we have to like actually try to do that Make- ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I know that, uh, yeah, it, I always made that joke with my dad and stuff like that. We, I mean, my parents are big Star Trek fans themselves. So I usually joke with my dad when it comes to my birthday or his birthday, you know, I, I'm eating a cake and, uh, and it's, or something like that. I'm eating a cake for some time, one time. And I'm like, hey, dad, I'm eating a cake. And he's like, what are you eating, son? And so you ask that. And it's like, yeah, so you're puffed at that cake with mint frosting, right? He's like, yep. <laughs> So yeah, I also love like there's variations like you have Captain Kirk's plomeek soup versus just like a generic plomeek soup versus yep. like somebody else's uh, version of plomeek soup, and it's like it's kind of cool to see all the different like all the different ways that people would pre- prefer having it. So I think it's kind of neat. Yeah, I think I prefer I, I... Neelix's plomeek soup though because it has more vegetables in it compared to Kirk's plomeek soup. This is yeah. very much like a, almost pretty much like a like a chicken noodle soup without the noodles. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow, okay. she he, yeah he thanked a lot of people. I, yeah, I it mean, was. Alan- it's a very cool. Like it's a very cool yeah. idea. Yeah, I mean, granted, you know, it's it's really cool, and you know it, and it. You know, he actually, they actually talked to the actors who were still alive. So, yeah. it, like, it was, just, it was nice to have them contribute to it, you know. Because by that time, there was only one cast member who had passed away, and that was DeForest Kelly. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, um, so that's pretty cool that, you know, and stuff like that. So, it was Alan Sims, actually, who put some of the notes about the, the how they were able to achieve the food look on the on Voyager and um because he's the he was the pop master so on Voyager. So uh so this is actually a really cool book. I um I mean I'm looking forward to trying this. I got this for a Christmas gift and I know I, I got this for a Christmas gift from my mother in law. 
So, mm-hmm. and, and, and I didn't expect it. I really didn't expect it uh, uh, to get a cookbook from my mother-in-law. I mean, granted, yeah. my, my, mother, my mother-in-law knows I cook, you yeah. know, for, for, you know, for, the, for me and my wife, Holly. But, uh, but I, I remember I, I got this book and I'm going like, what? There was, I, I know I wanted this book so bad when I, like, I, cause I, yeah, want, I, I like know I found can... it a super long time ago, but I just never got it. So I was just like, eh. yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like I haven't bought yeah. a lot of cookbooks. I, I usually, if I'm looking up a recipe I want to make, I just kind of look up, look it up online and I'll just make it if I'm in yeah. the mood for it. Yeah. Or on, like, I have a TikTok account. So um, I wrote nice. a few recipes on there. One of the things I actually do look on TikTok is um, uh, food recipes. That's smart. And you know, TikTok is the one social media that I have not gotten into yet. It feels very weird. I feel, feel out of place in time because so many people reference it and I'm like, oh, I don't have it. The the UI for it's a little jarring for me. And that's why I just haven't been able to do it yet. Oh. I don't like that it's like the videos are right in your face right when you open it. And I'm like, nah. I'm like I can't do it. it scares me off every time so I'm like I actually don't really want to look at anything on here <laughs> I wait for it to end oh, up I, on Instagram I, and then I use it <laughs> oh I get it I understand totally yeah and there was some few of, I mean during this pandemic I've actually pulled a few from TikTok as yep. the, uh, as the recipes and I'm going like this this actually turned out better than I thought you know and you know there was some recipes I saw from a person who was actually a. uh, uh a baker at a, at a renaissance festival so oh, that's cool <laughs> yeah in texas and i pulled a couple of his recipes out and i'm going like okay i'll try both of these and the first one was really good it was a chicken biscuit parmesan you just you put a chicken biscuit a chicken finger in there a little bit of sauce mm-hmm. a little bit of cheese and then you bake it in the oven with a biscuit you roll it up and stuff like that and that actually turned out pretty good but then the other one I, I found it was like like you put uh, sausage into like with with pasta and vegetables and a, and a marinade and some like that. It was it was I mean I I liked it. My wife didn't like it that much. Yeah. So it's tough. So, yeah, and I made it in the middle of summer, so when it was really hot last year. So yeah, uh, I have no no qualms making like a hot stew in the middle of summer. I I'll eat any food any time of year. I'm like ice cream in the winter, uh, stew in the summer. <laughs> that's pretty it. much anything a Minnesotan would do, you know. Like, yeah, I'm like it, 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 ice cream is not something we we refuse to eat in the winter. In fact, I think of more people like I get so that's my one my one uh, coral with so many places. I'm like I would still walk up to an outdoor ice cream place and get ice cream in the winter. You don't have to close for the winter. I was like, we'd all eat ice cream in the winter. Yeah, but I can get why certain, uh, like some of the, like the Dairy Queens here like, yeah. are only open during the summertime because you know uh, it's like it's not like a sit down restaurant. You have you go up to them and you order yeah. it and you eat outside. You have to be outside. Yes, I mean you wouldn't want it to be outside in twenty below weather eating an ice cream cone. <laughs> at a Dairy Queen, unless yeah, you were out, unless like, you were unless you were at the sit down restaurant, that's yeah. different. But there if might you be were some at, Minnesotans that... after seeing the Polar Plunge uh, event that just happened this past weekend here in Minneapolis, I won't be surprised. There are quite a few people out for that. They're just like jumping into the cold, like a cold cut out ice hole in a lake and enjoying themselves. I'm like, these people eat ice cream outside at 20 below days. <laughs> I would. You know, that's one actually one of my bucket list things, Kenzie, is actually doing to that. To do that? Yeah, to do yeah. that. Our local, I saw the our local meteorologist, Ian Leonard, he did a, he was part of that. He does it like every year. So I was like, yep. that's always great. Yeah, he does it for Special Olympics Minnesota. So yep. that is a good cause for it. And I, yep. I, I mean, I've always wanted to try to do that, do the, do a polar plunge, but in shallow water, please. I'm not a Yeah, big, they do it in shallow diver. water. Like, I think. Because where they yeah. did it, it looked like people jump in and they only go in, you know, like up to their yeah. necks. Like they jump in and like are able to get. I, out I don't mind way, that. So. I don't mind jumping yeah. in. Like I jump in when it's that high. Just don't do it on deep ends. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to end up or come up underneath and you're under the ice and it's like, oh god, I like get disoriented. <laughs> yeah, but I've always wanted to try it because I've understood. I mean, this is something that people have uh, allegedly said that they if they try it. They never be cold for the rest of the winter. Yeah, even when, I mean, like, 
So. And then you could eat all the all the food that you want. It wouldn't matter anymore because you'd be like, hey, I, I could eat all foods in winter now. Like, give me that ice cream. It's warmer than what I felt on that lake. <laughs> like, I didn't even <laughs> see, did I see, were there like an, because the only thing about this cookbook is it's not split out by like, it types of food like it's just no it's by, just divided by so, series you do have to pick through a little bit if you want to find like i mean if you know the names of desserts like it's pretty easy at the beginning you just look for like where they say cookies or cake or whatever so i but i was thinking about that I'm like is there what kind of like desserts or things that they have i saw oatmeal cookies and pies and things like that but some of the pies are like savory pies not like you know Yes. There's a there's a McCoy's mint julep. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I'll never forget that like scene a, in that drink. Yeah. Yeah, that's a drink. Yeah, it's a mint julep. Yeah. It's a yeah, I know. Nice. Admit, I like them. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember uh I remember forget that scene with uh I could put you in the hospital or something like that from the yeah. original series. He was drinking a mint julep and being all care not care in the world. <laughs> McCoy. I I was trying to see if there was any sort of like ice creamish thing or any sort of like cold food yes and obviously we got creole food in here because of cisco yep which i'm, so. I'm always down for that's and i'm down for them crazy. trying to get the uh, city of new orleans to get a statue of benjamin cisco down there i know so. they should because if we have one for jane way i want one for cisco that'd be sweet i would love to visit well, and having every like Every human character in Star Trek that's major have some sort of statue conveying where they're from. Yes, yeah. So they have. I know they're trying to get that one taken care of. I know uh, they were, you have one for Janeway. We have one for Kirk yep. in Riverside in Riverside, Iowa. So, so we got that done. Now we just gotta get the one for Cisco. Yes. I don't know. What do. I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't think. I don't. I don't know if Lavar is a real another- place. Yeah, so. we need to we need to need to do another online uh, petition. Petition. There you go. I was like, wait, I think it'll work. I'm like, that's, that's what trying to do that one. Janeway did Janeways. That was all because of petition and crowdfunded. Yep, it was. Yep, it was crowdfunded and a petition made to the Bloomington City Council. So, yeah. and that was uh, yep, and then also for I think it was, I think that was more of a writing petition for the one for Riverside, yeah. Iowa, Riverside, Iowa. So, uh, but yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if the bars are a real place, but definitely, uh, we'll find out where the, it is for, present day, right? Mm. Yeah. I put it for Picard, you know, that for France and then, and wait a minute, they've done one for Scotty too in Edinburgh, Scotland. Yeah. So, that's super cool. I love that. Yeah. And, it, and, uh, <laughs> And they, you know, they know that uh, the Scot- the Scots knew that James Doohan didn't do their accent correctly, and he didn't care. They didn't care. Yeah, it was just- I think it's fine. They they appreciate the like honorable yeah. mention, right? Like it's the thought that counts. Yeah, it's the thought that counts. Yes, totally. Yeah. So I know they're trying to get a petition done made for Cisco in New Orleans. So hopefully, it would be if they actually do it, they would be actually be hurricane resistant. Yeah. And stuff, and stuff like that. Hopefully that would be the case.
yeah. So I'm looking forward to trying this book uh, out um, regarding. I'm sure, the, we'll definitely I, post on our Instagram. If any, either of us make food, we we'll definitely try to share it and plate it up in, in a way that Neelix would be proud. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, and it's, and you know, I I thought he was a. I mean, <laughs> I would love to be have a food made by him. Yeah. By Neelix. I mean, granted, Neelix, you either love him or hate him, but. I love that it throughout this book, he'll be like, I know that it, he's like, I know that I don't get a lot of compliments in my cooking. He's like, haven't you noticed? Like just some dumb, like here and there. So being like, I know a lot of people are a big fan of how I cook, but deep down, everybody loves them. Yeah. That's so crazy, if anybody, yeah. anybody wants us to cook anything in particular or ask us about if, there, if this recipe exists in the book, you can reach out to us. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, I I mean, granted, if you have this book, you know, uh, let us know if you've tried anything out of here, too. Yeah. You know, because we definitely would want to appreciate your suggestion. If you say that you've ha- you've had this book for, I mean, granted, this book has been around for two decades plus. Yeah. You know, and been out and you have a copy, you've tried it, you go like, oh, this is something I tried. I loved it. Um and stuff like that, let us know, because we would yeah. definitely love suggestions as well. So, all right. So um, I think probably next time we talk will be our one-year anniversary show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, it's probably the next time we'll be talking about will be then uh, about that. So until, ne- until then, take care and live long and prosper. Live long and prosper.